Okay, so uh, we're here. To, I'm from Stanley Access Technologies. My name is Kevin Kalman, and we manufacture these balance doors and operators. The balance doors are our Stanley Rush series balance doors, and uh, they're equipped with Magic Force low energy door operators. I'm going to just quickly take you through the uh, installation and maintenance manual so you know what to, what to go for and touch on some key points. Okay? This manual includes installation, which is already completed, um, talks a little bit about removal of some of the covers that could be tricky in what you're doing, um, and uh, gives you a parts list and some basic maintenance and cleaning. This is basically how your balance door went in, frame, then the pivots, then the hardware that you see on it. Each GM has a cover plate and uh, it conceals the balance door shaft. <coughs> you can see that it's pretty easily removable with a screwdriver. If for any reason they seem like after removing them that they are loose, just gently bend the uh, snap-in section and uh, it'll, it'll be tight once again. The door is equipped with a LCN 2030 door closer, overhead concealed in the top jam. That's easily replaced, so, you know, over time, one of the benefits of this door is that its wear item is easily accessible. So you, you know, you can replace that. This would be at the manual doors only. The doors that are equipped with an operator have an overhead concealed operator where the manual closer would otherwise be. Okay, and these, these are operated doors, right? Yeah. So they're motorized. Yes. So I'm not sure. I don't know if it was one leaf of each pair or was it both leaves of each pair? Yeah. I think it was just one leaf of each pair. Okay, so yeah. one side is operated and the other side is normal. Exactly, so you have one closer and one operator. Okay. Um, you'll see that we, in this manual, give you an exploded list of parts. So if anything is ever needed, identifying it, curing it should be a snap. Here's the list. Maintenance, just basic lubrication. You know, just uh, lubricate the moving parts a couple times a year. Um, just the closers if necessary. Um, just basic cleaning with uh, light detergent and uh, water. Um, there are two locations for, uh, for grease and it's that's part 82, so you just go up here and take a look and you'll see part 82. It'll identify it for you. Mind you that we're available to do preventive maintenance on this stuff a couple times a year so that you guys don't have to worry about it for a pretty, a very reasonable price. How much is that? Um, it's, it's like, uh, I, don't, I don't quote it, I'm not, not sure of it myself, but it's a couple hundred bucks in opening, something like that. It's very reasonable to do better maintenance with us. Did we already do some here? So. Oh, yeah, um, you have a painted finish, so you're just going to use mild, just, you know, soap and water, just keep it clean. And one of the things that we want to definitely give precaution on is to uh, frequently, you know, keep stuff clean. Don't allow the dirt to accumulate and more than anything, and I know it's tough to avoid, but just try to stay on top of the salt situation, you know. You guys, this goes for any door, you know, any door, any threshold, I'm sure you see it. Just, you know, that's the, that is the main, you know, point of emphasis in terms of cleaning and longevity of the actual one of itself and just getting, getting that out of there. Don't let it build up all winter long piles against the pivot, against the frame, you know. Never rust it up. 
It's just not, yeah, it's not a good idea. Um, gives you tips on how to remove certain types of residue from the surfaces. Um, but, you know, pretty simple stuff. A lot of this has to do with the, the special metals like stainless or Munz metal. Um, paint is very easy to maintain. Very easy. And this is just another note on, on the polish finishes. Um, that does it for the balance doors. You should be in receipt of this manual. And we are always here to support you. I'm just going to move on to the operator real quick. The operator is a Stanley Magic Force operator. It is a low energy operator. This manual is for three different types of operators. Yours is the Magic Force. Um, adjustments should be done by an authorized, qualified, ADAM certified technician who knows what they're doing with low energy operators. Otherwise, if not adjusted correctly or done wrong, it could hurt somebody. Um, we have service available 24 7, which you guys are, you know, probably already familiar with. Um, these doors comply with ANSI A156.19, which is low energy standard, and that is referenced in Mass CM 780. Um, I'm not going to read this word for word, but I'll just give you a, a quick synopsis that these operators are electromechanical. They have microprocessor control on board. There are a couple of relays in there to interface with incoming uh, signals from access control systems and also uh, output relays for uh, sending signals out back to those systems. There's also uh, wireless controls. I believe these are Ooh, these are wireless, so they do have receivers for switches as well. So you're telling me I have like a smart door? Yeah, it's smart, sure. And I mean, it's a microprocessor. It, in terms of being smart, it, it actually is pretty. It is pretty smart because the microprocessor is uh, it's it's a it's on a platform. It's built on a platform, basically that's used for all of our controls. So our technicians can come out and take a control off the truck and just load up Magic Force for firmware on it, you know? So you're never like searching for a control for this particular operator. All of our controls are interchangeable, just no matter what you load on it. And then the guys connect on Bluetooth and it gives them information as to what went wrong with it, what's going on now. Um, and uh, so diagnosing and servicing is quite easy. Um, replacement is, like I said, all the guys carry it. So, it is pretty smart, but uh, it doesn't have any kind of like uh, smart TV, like internet connection, or you know, it certainly doesn't. Just have, Bluetooth. Certainly doesn't have blower. <laughs> you know, yeah, just Bluetooth. Just Bluetooth. That's, that's pretty insane. And so, all right. Um, so it's like I said, it's electromechanical. Um, it's very simple. When it fails, it's it's safe. Uh, when it fails, it just works as a manual closer. It doesn't, you know. Okay. You don't need to do anything with it. There's no fire on connection to it necessary. It just, just works like a manual door when the power fails. It has the capability of being on, off, or holding open without having to cut power to the unit. You can do these perform these functions using the switch. Okay? And the door can hold open indefinitely if necessary. You've got crowds to come in, just hold it open. It'll do it. All these functions could be programmed remotely if you want to pick desired. Although that chip is probably sad, it is what it is, depending on what the process was already prescribed, right? Um, just, uh, you know, decals are already on the door for you. I, I wouldn't let them, you know, once they deteriorate, you should look to replace them, because people do use decals are required. Again, so well, what's, what's typically like the failure on them? The what? What fails on them? Oh, nothing. I mean, I'm just saying, like, 10 years from now, if they're, you know, cracked and you want to replace them, don't just scrape them off. You put, actually put a new one on there. That's all. Our guys do that when they do service, too. If they you know, notice a damaged or old, you know, decal, they'll just scrape it off. So oh, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about the actual door itself. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, the door itself, I mean, that's, that's, 
that's not something you just replace. Um, so again, in the manual, it gives you some more idea like troubleshooting. All right, so you can go go here if something isn't working right. Um, basic stuff, basic concepts of a drawing. For instance, if you had to talk to a technician, uh, you, you'd know what you're talking about. Uh, more, more terminology. Again, if you have you want to talk with somebody, a technician over the phone or public service, you have the ability to speak the language. And the daily safety check. This is for you get to perform safety on each door, and it gives you a whole list of things to do. Now, this is really most important on doors that have automatic sensing devices. Your door is down, the low energy. So basically, what you're going to check with your door is you go up to it, you make sure that it seems like it's opening between three and five seconds, and that's closing about five seconds of close and that it's you know operating properly um, that it stops when it bumps into you that's what you care about um, without the motion sensors and all that stuff a lot of this is not applicable okay. but it's here for you to review so I think that concludes the manual review and I'd like to uh, ask if you have any questions about the Academic aspect of this. What? What typically fails on these doors? What should I look out for? Is it like electronic? Is it going to be the hinges or is it the closers? Um. I mean, they're I your mean, doors. You really? Know. I mean, we're, we're talking about failures. Um, you could expect these to go for many years without any failures. Uh, where items include things like sweeps. Gasket, that, that kind of stuff, you know. Every so often, you might choose to, or you might not. They just kind of wear down in time. It doesn't really affect the, the door too much. And really, uh, with the automatic operator, every so often they need a they need an adjustment. You know, same thing with the doors pivots and closer. Every once in a while, it needs adjustment. And with Repetitive maintenance, you should be able to make those adjustments and keep the door running for a long, long time without having to replace anything. Okay. So I, I, I don't expect uh, you should be on alert for any failure. Just, just take care of it, you know, and it'll last you guys a long, long time. Even in this environment where it will be used frequently and by, you know, I guess it's strong enough people. Right? It's a lot of people daily. Yeah. What about the alignment? That there's no adjustment in because we've had some problems getting that to align and stay aligned. Align? Yeah, the uh, one leaf uh, and one of the entries, it just doesn't close all the way. It's got a two stage closing. It comes down fast and it goes slow. Yeah. And it stops. If you give a little nudge, it'll click, yeah. but it doesn't go and click on its own. Well, this, I'm not exactly sure what the perfect, what the reason for that is, but uh, that has to do with, it, it could be uh, air pressure, which I think is what that is, based on the conversation I had walking in here yeah. with someone else. Um, and uh, that two-stage closing, that, that's called a back, back check. It slows down like that on purpose. Right. Yeah, I know it's, 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 it goes just fine in the first and then the second. It slows down. Yeah. It slows down, which is okay. That's what it's supposed to do, but it would just, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's due to, I think it's due to, to airflow. It sounds like there's a lot of pressure building up in that vestibule. Based on the conversations I had with, uh, with others here this morning, I haven't seen it firsthand, but it sounds to me, I was told, that there's a lot, they can feel the wind whipping past the door. Uh, and that is most good. likely the case. Good. Is there a way to compensate? All right, I'm going to ring you in, all right? See me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. It should be open. Uh. <coughs> press, okay. press the handicap button.
Now release. Yeah, my side doesn't work. Okay, just open the door. You should be able to open the door. This is the door you're going to want to, this is the uh, the door. You'll see these, if you won't, we, when we open these one second, so we'll press the door release, you'll see these with that. Can you ring the door?
people come through this door while it's closing, it'll reopen. These doors are set up to open and close and not be held open. You can't flip a switch and hold them open, apparently. Hmm. They have the capability, Gus, mm -hmm. but the switch isn't exposed. I would say it does make some sense because you don't want uh, anybody to just put a switch and hold door open for an indefinite period of time. Oh, right? well, yeah, no, but I'm thinking more of like moving day. Oh, I got. Mm -hmm. Thousand something people coming in and out. Right. So opening the door, closing it, just right up there with the front open, you know? Well, you should you should be able to give them a signal. From the, uh, I don't know if there's a, how these are set up in the access control system, but they should be able they could set it up that way. They might have already done it. This door is holding open. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's possible. You can you can put a wedge under it. You know, if you need open. But, uh, and there are other things that can be done. I mean, key switches can be installed, you know, if you wanted to install a key switch that's secure that one of your facilities people would be authorized to, to use. Mm -hmm. The key switch could be installed here on the, on the frame, on the wall. Um, turning that would hold the doors open. So there are things you can do, you can add to this. Um, these okay. operators are incredibly flexible. Um, they can do lots of different things, whatever you want them to do. Um, it's pretty cool. The way they are now is just the way they are set up, you know. But yeah, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, I would work with you for that. Yeah, yeah. well, let me find out first how they how they work, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. If the, these are set up on a computer, right? And I could just sit, tell the computer to open these doors. Well, I open the door. If not, they all may may have to look into a different option. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, it works because this door is propped open. Yeah, they will hold open indefinitely. If if given a signal for this so. Yeah. So, um, do you want to check out the other door? See if yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, fast. Yeah. It's on a 15 second delay, right? City? Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Close to that. Maybe 10, 12. They're adjustable up to 30 seconds. Yeah. So um, I think our guys did just send them somewhere between 10 and 15. Is this the door they were saying wasn't closing? That is the door. Looks pretty tight down there to me. Didn't feel all that tight though. I noticed one of the security buttons was missing from the door out there. Yeah. You noticed that? Yeah, I, I told one of the guys to put him in and he didn't know we had to stop one in. So um, I just told him.